what I've discovered since getting out, since becoming more public with my own agency background, is that people really don't, I mean, especially American people, the, the average American out there doesn't realize how despicable the world outside of our borders really is, mm -hmm. right? Like cartels, cartels literally will torture you, right? Terrorist groups will torture you. Not, not, not because there's any strategic benefit from it, right. but just because they want to send a message. It's their version of psychological operations. It's, it's a number of different things, right? Not to mention the fact that they're oftentimes like, these are not well-educated, you know, balanced, emotionally stable people who gather into cartels and gather into uh, terrorist organizations or gather into extremist groups. These are desperate people who, who live hard lives who learn to live by a, a code of ethics that's defined by the organization that they come into. So, you know, the idea that, that you or I might ever actually inflict prolonged pain on somebody, it's, it's difficult to even imagine coming from the American mindset. Um, and and it's, it's fascinating to me because oftentimes Americans will get all up in arms about saving whales and about right. protecting animals from makeup testing and we'll get upset about about immigrants being shipped from texas to new york right like when you compare those to what's happening in mexico city like it's yeah. insane that people don't realize how protected and privileged and and uh humane we are and that we're we're subdividing and limiting and arguing with each other over you know minuscule things and we're calling it humane and it, it's the definition of humane is so much wider than what we consider i, I was gonna say in the you know I, I periodically i'll i'll get somebody on that will be either an atf agent or dea agent or um uh raymond hicks uh there's a he's a sheriff's deputy who was in the uh, is it broward county Broward County, he was in Broward County Sheriff's deputy. They had taken him and he, they were using him to do under uh, controlled buys because he, he grew mm -hmm. up in the streets, right? So, you know, it, it's hard for a normal cop to come off like a drug dealer. You know, he's a, a he, even if it's a black guy, right? Like if he's a black guy raised upper middle class drug dealers, they, 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 they talk to you for five minutes ago. Absolutely not. Like I, you're trying to talk this, but I can feel it's not you. You know, intuition is in, insane, right? It's so Hicks goes out and he's one of these guys selling drugs and they're busting people, but the other deputies are stealing money. Mm -hmm. Like they're taking money from the drug dealers. So he starts to speak out about it, starts to complain about it, starts to make make waves, and they go, "Oh no, well, you, you know, you, you're a problem." They send him to live to go back and work in the jail, which is where he'd come from. He said, oh, "I didn't care about that," but he had made statements where you guys should be in jail not some of these drug dealers. Like you guys are, are just as bad as them. You're stealing from them. You're beating them up. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you know, what ends up happening is they end up basically including him on a, a case. Um, it's like 700 kilos of cocaine or something. It's ridiculous. And he ends up going to trial and wins. They then arrest him again and indict him for something else. This time that he goes to trial again and wins. He, he lost everything. Like he lost, you know, his savings, his house, everything through this process. He was actually arrested Again, and keep in mind, every time they raided his house. Mm. So, and in the comments section, guys are saying, we're the most corrupt country. We're the most, we're the <laughs> most. And they keep it. And I'm always in there going, okay, look, there's corruption. Any system, you could design the perfect system, but the moment you put humans in charge of it, there is going to be issues. There's going to be corruption. People are going to take advantage of it. So, and you know. And they're all, you know, our justice system is the most corrupt. Stop. It's not the most <laughs> corrupt. Okay. Is there corruption? Yes. Yeah. Is there an old boys network in some situations? Absolutely. But there's just, you know, it's certainly not the most, you know, is it, it's I actually, look, I just didn't, I, I, I honestly think maybe I met one or two people that it was questionable that maybe they were innocent. And I, I know one guy that I absolutely, he's innocent. He should have got some time for stupidity. Hmm. You know, just for putting yourself in this situation and being stupid, you should have known better. I don't think he was technically what he did was illegal, but you're an idiot. You should have done two years just for being stupid. So, but still innocent. Honestly, other than that, the only real disparities I've seen is in sentencing. You're not innocent. You didn't deserve 15 years. I read your whole case. I read the transcripts. You didn't, shouldn't have gotten 15 years. You probably should have got a year or two. 
is that corruption? Like, no, it's it maybe it's slightly unfair and it's not, but in comparison to other countries, bro, come on. Yeah. This yeah. is you people, people in America, they have no, there's no idea how brutal it is out, out there. It is. It's wild. It's wild that in countries like Thailand, in countries like UAE, in countries like Saudi Arabia, you can't speak out and say a negative comment. Even privately, it's it's legally culpable to say a negative comment about a royal family. Right. right. The royal family of Thailand, the, the Saudi royals, or one of the seven royal families that are inside UAE. To even say something negative about them makes you legally culpable. And the and the prisons, I mean, you can imagine what a prison looks like in UAE. It's yeah. not it's not like the prisons here in the United no. States where people are given, you know, a closed space where the where the barred windows are still windows. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's it's pretty wild. And I will it's also interesting because uh you were just talking about uh, the, the, the sentencing being the area of discrepancy, right? I don't know what, I don't think people understand how our justice system works. It is a, it is a system that pushes all authority to the judges, right? right. Judges have independent authority over their court and judges can't even agree with other judges. It's there. Yeah. It is, it is the exact opposite of objective. It is a subjective world. They get to interpret the law. They get to apply the law. They get to do it in their district, their municipality. If they're a Supreme Court judge, they do it federally. And I didn't realize this until recently either. Judges are oftentimes given lifetime judgeship. Yeah, yeah. Lifetime. Yeah. Like, so if you're, if you get, you get accepted to be a judge at whatever age, 35, 45, 55, whatever it might be, you never have to leave. It's not publicly elected. Yeah. After that, like you're you're a judge forever. So if so you you're not really concerned about p public opinion because there's it, it it's almost impossible to get rid of me. Exactly, it's insane, man. And that's the justice system, which is one of the three legs that our entire American system is built on. Right, right. the judicial branch. It's just it's one of those things to me that's both a superpower and a vulnerability in our system because we we have that process. Right. Where you are, you do have yeah, to earn a, the right to be a judge. You do have to be yeah. publicly elected. Well, in and it's positions. reviewed. There's a review process and a review process and a review process up to the Supreme Court if they want to hear it. Because they don't always have people like, oh, go to the Supreme Court. They don't have to hear it. Yeah. But yeah, there's a review process all the way up through the through the whole thing. The only problem is it does take a long time. It is cumbersome. And you may have to sit in, in jail for five years until your situation gets rectified. But the, the fact that there is the possibility of it being yeah. cleared up a system at all. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, oh, it's funny. Uh, I, there was a guy, uh, Ephraim Devaroli had told me one time, um, they can, but and this is, this is, it goes against what you're saying. He said, they can do anything they want to you as long as they give you a system to appeal it. Mm. And I was like, I was like, Oh wow. Like the way he said that, I was like, wow. He's, he's a, think about it. He's like, oh, you have a problem with that? Well, here, fill out this form. Yep. You can, you can appeal it. It goes to the next step. Oh, you didn't like our opinion? Great. Go to the next step. <laughs> you know, so he's like, he's like, they'll drag it out by the time maybe you'll win. He said, but two years later, you've already done your sentence. Yeah. Ours, so are not perfect. No, I agree. And what's, what's, what's wild to me is that what I've discovered in my kind of CIA experience looking at the United States is we are very much a country of conviction. We're looking for and rewarding the most convicted people, the people who can show the most tenacity, the most determination, the most diligence. And all of our systems are created to eat away at each of those things, right? So that the person who doesn't have follow through, the person who isn't tenacious, the person who doesn't have the courage to keep pushing on, the person who gives up, that's our favorite kind of person. That's inside the United States. Everybody loves the person who gives up. Because the person who gives up just pays a little extra money to have somebody else fix the problem. The person who gives up pays their taxes on time and at the maximum rate. The person who gives up just follows the rule of law and crosses at the crosswalk. The person who gives up is the person that everybody gets to walk on. And we raise people to get walked on. Public school raises you to be walked on. Church raises you to get walked on. Like we live in a culture that's all that's literally propagating the idea that to be a good citizen, you have to shut up and take it. And then the people who don't, the few that don't, and the few who show the resilience year after year, decade after decade, to not get stepped on and to not put up with shit, those few people end up being wildly successful and they become the target of criticism and anger from everybody else. If you like this short clip, make sure you click here to see the next clip or here to see the full podcast episode.